Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm in Chester, Massachusetts. I'm uh, Brian Farr, uh, founder of Historic Route 20, and uh, we are very honored tonight to have with us uh, from Retro Roadmap, uh, Maud Betty, who did a series of wonderful videos taking us on some wonderful vintage places on a cross-country road trip last uh, summer, fall, and up to New Year's uh, during COVID when we couldn't get out and travel. And she took us to some amazing places and she inspired me even more to want to see better places. And we asked her to come here tonight to share some of the best places on Route 20 to visit for a road trip. So, so all yours, Maude. All mine. Okay. So thank you very much, Brian, for having me here and for allowing me to virtually travel Route 20. Um, this has been so exciting. And what I've done is we've got a little bit of a presentation going that if the technology gods and goddesses are with us, we'll be able to, uh, we'll be able to share my screen. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to go on like a virtual road trip. I'm hoping you can see the map in front of you. And we are going to go to some great places. So let me just make sure this works. Yes. So U.S. Route 20 has been known as the longest highway in the United States since 1963. While it doesn't have a catchy song like Route 66, Historic Route 20 is cool in its own way. Let me back up, see if we can go here, so you can get the whole view here. It runs coast to coast, from the Atlantic coast of Boston, Massachusetts, to the Pacific coast of Newport, Oregon. 3,365 miles long. And it crosses through 12 states. And the best thing is, is we've got cool vintage places to tell you about in each one of those 12 states. Like most good things, uh, it starts in Massachusetts. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to follow what started out as the old post road. And while much of what has been what is Route 20 has been transformed into high speed highways, Historic Route 20, we are going to focus on taking the original 1926 alignment. And that means pre-bypass, pre-interstates, and the best part is we're going to go through all sorts of small downtowns. So let's get started. Like all wonderful things, we just starting in Massachusetts, in Boston, Maud Betty's home state. Now, there are plenty of guidebooks that will tell you the many charms of Boston. However, we're in the city for one reason and one reason only, and that's to begin our westbound retro road trip of Route 20. Route 20 begins in Kenmore Square, steps from Fenway Park, and practically right below the iconic Sitco sign. But we're here to scout another sign entirely, and that's the sign to Newport, showing that Newport, Oregon is that away if you keep calling Route 20 West, which we will, of course. Um, now, speaking of route, here's an interesting regional note. As I noticed, as I mentioned, I am from Massachusetts. I call it Route 20 as do people in New York and Pennsylvania. But in Ohio, Illinois, and Indiana, they call it Route 20. And west of the Mississippi, they call it Highway 20. So let's hit the road. I mean, the route. Now, as many of you may know, Maud Betty has a soft spot for vintage diners. Um, these are the small scale vintage diners, narrow metal clad restaurants known for being built in factories and moved out to their site. And on Route 20 in Massachusetts, we are lucky enough to have a number of classic diners to choose from. Now, heading geographically from west, from east to west, we are hitting Wilson's Diner in Waltham, built in 1949 by the Worcester Lunch Car Company. Let me see if I can use my, oh, I can use my little pointer there. Then we've got the Edgemere Diner. The Edgemere is in Shrewsbury. It's a 1940s Federo dining car built in New Jersey. We've got the Day and Night Diner in Palmer and the Yankee Diner car, Diner in Charlton. Now, the Day and Night is the oldest diner on Route 20, uh, built in 1923 by the Worcester Lunch Car Company. Now, if sweets are more your thing, I suggest highly you pull up into the circular drive in front of Hebert's Candy Mansion. This is in Shrewsbury, Massachusetts, and Fred Frederick Hebert started his small chocolate making business in 1917. And in 1946, he purchased this elegant Tudor style mansion. Dubbed the Candy Mansion, it became the first roadside retail confectionery in the United States and is still home to Hebert candy making today. If you're a fan of white chocolate, you're in the right place because Mr. Hebert 
is the first chocolatier to bring the recipe for white chocolate from Europe to the U.S. in 1956. Moving right along, this may look familiar to our host right here because it's this Chester Mass. This is in one of the many quaint towns in the rural Hill Towns section east of the Berkshires. Now, my Boston accent really wants to call this place Cams, Cams, because I can't pronounce my eyes when I think of Boston, but I am assured by Brian that west of Boston, they actually do pronounce their eyes, and this is called Carms. So Carms is, he should know this because this is his neighbor as he is in the Route 20 guy, Brian, the historic Route 20 shares this large white painted granite building with Carms Coffee Shop. Built in 1924, this building was repainted from a mandate from Mobile Gas, and you can see the giant original flying red horse on the roof. This always reminds me of my dad because he loved to collect mobile memorabilia. After being closed for decades, this historic building was brought back to life in 2019. Now, while you can't get gas here anymore, you can get your tummy filled with home-cooked food at Carms so while sitting at vintage benches and sitting at the original counters. You can also fill your itinerary with travel information about places along Route 20, courtesy of the Visitor Center that was once part of Charlie's Garage. Now our last stop in Route 20 in Massachusetts is the Hancock Shaker Village in Hancock, Massachusetts. Settled by a religious order here in 1783, they became known as the Shakers because of their singing and ecstatic dancing. So if that's the case, I think Maud Betty might be a shaker too. The community was active here until about 1960, and now this building is considered a living history museum because you can visit it to see examples of their art, craftsmanship, and furniture. Now I'm gonna let you know each time we hit in a different state, and already we are in New York State, the second of the 12 states that we are going to go through on Historic Route 20. Now the America Hotel in Sharon Springs is an example of a classic 1800s hotel. It was wonderfully restored in the 1990s by its current owners, Doug and Garth, who offer warm hospitality in its historic setting. Sharon Springs was known in the 19th century heyday for its mineral spas and lavish hotels. And in the 1950s and 60s, Sharon Springs became an extension of the Borscht Belt, a popular region for people escaping the summer heat of the city before air conditioning became so common. Now today, folks escape to Sharon Springs to enjoy the many historic buildings and boutiques such as Beekman 1802 Mercantile, a high-end farm store carrying local gourmet food products and handcrafted gifts. Now, if your favorite road stop shops are a little bit more kitschy oriented, I've got you covered because we are stopping at the TP. So the TP is located on historic Route 20 in Cherry Valley. It's built specifically as a roadside attraction in the 1950s, selling souvenirs, local crafts, and authentic Native American goods. Take in the spectacular view of the Mohawk Valley for here, and of course, you're going to have to pose with a photo with a giant buffalo out front. And even though he's wearing his mask, as he sh safely should, he is not live. <laughs> now, we are uh, now entering the Finger Lakes, the Finger Lakes region of New York. These are named for the 11 gla narrow glacial lakes in the area. Now this destination is known for its wine industry with over 100 wineries currently using grapes that have been grown along the slopes of these lakes for over a century. Now our first stop in the area is called Skinny Atlas. And if you look at this, if you can see the screen, you can know right away that this place is not, this, this town does not look like it is spelled. And this is because the name is from the Iroquois term for the adjacent Skinny Atlas Lake, which means Long Lake, Finger Lakes, as we say. Now, Doug's Fish Fry in Skinny Atlas is a staple fish fry location. You cannot miss their good food awning. And while it only opened in 1982, I did the math, and I hate to break it to you, but they are that was 39 years ago, so they are getting closer to being a re retro restaurant every day. Now, if pronouncing Skinny Atlas was too much for you, here's a break because we're going to head to Auburn, New York, something a little bit easier to pronounce. So Hunter's Dineront. I love the name of this because it is a part diner, part restaurant, portmanteau, dineront, right? 
This is an authentic vintage diner, dear to my heart, built by the Jerry O. Mahoney Company in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Opened, it was opened in 1951 by the Hunter family, who have a claim to fame besides this restaurant. Their daughter, Nelia, married and became Nelia Hunter Biden, the first wife of our current president. Their son, Robert Biden's middle name, Hunter. So you may recognize him as Hunter Biden. Now, another retro road work, bleh, another retro roadmap worthy stop in Auburn is the Finger Lakes Drive-In Movies. This is New York State's oldest drive-in movie theater, and they opened in 1947. Now, speaking of the 40s, the next town we go through is Seneca Falls, and that was said to have inspired the 1946 holiday classic, It's a Wonderful Life. They even change their name every December to Bedford Falls. Now, this is a kind of a mod Betty aside, as I like to throw them in there, but I discovered that the bridge here in Seneca Falls inspired the famous George jumping into the river scene in uh, It's a Wonderful Life. It was built by the Phoenix Bridge Company in 1915. The Phoenix Bridge Company, it was located in Phoenixville, Pennsylvania, which is home of Maud Betty and Retro Roadmap HQ. Small world. So Seneca Falls is also notable because of the first women's rights convention was held here in 1848, and it was the launch of the women's suffrage movement. The National Women's Rights Historic Park here in town comm commemorates this important event. Now you may get a little bit hungry and we're heading to Waterloo and we've got two places, two retro roadmap worthy places that are famous in their own right. So Connie's Diner, you see here, opened as Chick's Diner in 1963 and it's housed in what they call a space age looking factory built diner made by the Mano Company of Fairfield, New Jersey. Now it's been known as Connie's since 1989 and the must try menu item on here, according to the Route 20 guy, is the trash plate that you can also see on the screen here. So the trash plate is their version of the famous Rochester garbage plate. Let me dissect this for you if I can. You can choose two meats, cheeseburgers, hamburgers, or hot dogs. You can have french fries or home fries, macaroni salad or coleslaw. They top it with a spicy meat sauce and chopped onions and they rightly call it a ton of food. So if you're hungry, you can go to Connie's, or if you are a little bit, you have a little bit of that starstruckness, they also have this small tribute to the time that Linda Lavin from the TV show Alice visited the diner. I cannot wait to see that because I am often finding myself singing the theme song to Alice, and you're lucky that we don't have more time tonight or I would be singing it for you right now. So consider yourself lucky. Oh, and there we go. I knew there was one more place to eat as if that trash plate was not delicious and filling enough. Let's say you don't want to even leave your car to go have something to eat. You can stop at Max Drive-In, also in Waterloo. Opened in 1961, all you have to do is beep for service at this classic drive-in to get a mug filled with Richardson's root beer delivered directly to your car door. In addition to serving up classic burgers that taste like they would have in the 1960s, they've also got specialties such as local Hoffman sausage. You can get white or red. I don't even know what that means, but it's a local thing. And you can sometimes even get their own version of poutine. So poutine is a Canadian delicacy of fries covered with melted cheese and gravy. All right, remember that tongue twister name we just learned a few moments ago of a certain town? Here's another one. Look at the screen if you can. All right. I can't even pronounce it when I look at it, so I have to look at my notes. Canandaigua. Canandaigua, New York. It's derived from the Seneca name for this historic village, and it means the chosen spot. Now, this was the chosen spot for the Miami Hotel in Canandaigua to open in 1953 to serve travelers who couldn't quite get to Miami, Florida, um, and they even built a few pull-in bungalows for honeymooners. A recent restoration revived this classic roadside lodging, and each room has a different vintage theme, including classic vintage tile bathrooms. It gets rave reviews from modern day travelers who appreciate the vintage charm. So now we're gonna shuffle off to Buffalo, and our next stop is in Hamburg. 
So in Hamburg, of course, we are going to eat hot dogs. Yes, hot dogs at Red Top Hot Dogs in Hamburg. It has been in business since 1946. And from here, you can enjoy not only a view of Lake Erie, but on a clear day, as Robert Streisand might say, you can see all the way over to Canada. The Brockton Arch has been making motorists feel welcome since 1913. Once adorned with lights, many towns had these arches, but only a few like this one remain. And the Johnson Estate Winery is in Westfield. It is New York's oldest estate winery. Started as a great Concord grape vineyard and fruit farm in 1908, a second generation planted hybrid French grapes here. And in 1961, Frederick Johnson opened a winery. He received New York's Farm Winery License Number no. 2, and now there are over 200 wineries in the state of New York. Now, speaking of states, we are already hitting our third of our 12 states. We are in Pennsylvania, but only for a smidge because we are up in the northwest corner of Pennsylvania. First stop is the Butts Phillips Octagon Barn one of the few remaining octagon barns that were once popular in this area because they thought it would withstand wind. Located just off of Route 20, it is in the borough of Northeast Pennsylvania, even though Northeast Pennsylvania is actually in Northwest Pennsylvania, it is part of Northeast Erie County. Now don't worry, there will not be a quiz, but I just wanted you to know, Northeast is in the Northwest, go figure. Speaking of Erie, I love this. Polacco's Chocolates is in downtown Erie, and it first opened in 1903. Now it moved to the corner of Route 20 and Parade Street in 1971, and not much has changed here since then. So but besides their delicious chocolates, the old candy counters, displays and machinery make this vi vintage candy shop worth a visit. Now just outside of downtown Erie is Waldemere Park the fourth oldest amusement park in Pennsylvania and the 10th oldest in the nation, having opened as a trolley park in 1896. Now, I love this. This park is admission free. And what that means is you can go into the park for free and you only have to pay if you want to go on a ride. Now, it's known for two of their vintage rides, the Pirates Cove Funhouse and this Wacky Shack. Wacky Shack, created by famed amusement park creator Bill Tracy in 1969. His design uses forced perspective, fluorescent paint, mirrors, strobes, and dark spaces to achieve a wacky effect. At one point, there were 12 of these rides scattered across the country, but today, this is the last remaining wacky shack in operation. Now, Girard, Pennsylvania is home to what is considered to be the first monument to Union soldiers who died in the Civil War erected in the United States but it is also known as once being the wintering home of the Dan Wright Circus. Now, you may not have heard of Dan Wright, but in his day, just before the Civil War, he was one of the most famous personalities in the US. His shows were bigger than P.T. Barnum's, and in fact, the term greatest show on earth was actually first used to describe his circus. He was the first to incorporate animals, acrobatics, and clowns into the circus, and he also coined the term jump on the bandwagon. For over 50 years, Gerard has commemorated their part in his story with an annual festival known as the Dan Wright Days. Moving right along, we are in Ohio. Ohio, state four. Just over the state line from Ohio is the White Turkey Drive-In in Conneaut that I can't help but think that I can't pronounce that without sounding like I'm from Boston. Conneaut. Opened in 1952 when turkey ranch owners Ed and Marge Tuttle were inspired by a visit to a Richardson's root beer stand, they decided to open up a small restaurant and highlight their delicious turkey sandwiches along with frosty root beer, both of which are still served here today. And as you can see, nothing much has changed here since the stand opened almost 70 years ago. Now, family farms and farm stands are plentiful along historic Route 20 in Ohio. West Orchards in Perry has been here for five generations and produces strawberries, cherries, and delicious sweet corn. When you stop by, make sure to get a picture in front of the historic Route 20 sign after you pick up some fresh produce. And speaking of those brown and white signs, those historic signs, the very first historic Route 20 sign was placed in front of the Riders Inn in Painesville, Ohio. 
Hello, Cleveland. Now, much like other big cities that Historic Route 20 winds through, there are too many sites to mention in the city, but one will be of interest to former is the former Higby's department store, featured prominently in the movie A Christmas Story. Now at Jack's Casino, the interior has experienced restorations, but you can get a glimpse of its former incarnation. But if you're a real Christmas Story fan, what you need to do is take a short detour off of Route 20 and tour the actual Christmas Story house. Because yes, this is where they actually film the movie and you can tour it and go inside. Now, as we continue along on West on Route 20, we'll pass through an area known as the Firelands. Now, this is so interesting to me because I'm from New England. This name is a nod to the settlers who were offered land in Ohio when their original properties in Connecticut were burned by the British in the American Revolution. So Elyria, Oberlin, Wakeman, Norwalk, and Bellevue are all quaint towns with great stories. Now, while not a truly authentic vintage shop, we need to thank Daniel Lyon in Wakeman, Ohio for their support of Historic Route 20. This gift and floral shop is an example of how investing in old vintage properties and preserving their unique character helps to drive a town back to success. Just west of Norwalk is the Starview Drive-In, opened in 1949. And prior to entering Monroeville, you can follow the yellow brick road, actually the red brick road, it's not yellow, and drive down an original stretch of brick road just one of just three remaining in all of Route 20. Now I asked the Route 20 guy, he told me the other two are in Geneva, Ohio and Cherry Valley, Illinois. Now we are moving right along as the Muppets would say, we are already in Indiana, state five. Indiana, the first time we in encounter when we cross over from Ohio into Indiana is, is Angola, where I encourage you to park and, park and walk around. Not only are you gonna see a Civil War monument on the circle, you're going to see the Steuben County Courthouse modeled after Boston Faneuil Hall. And you're going to see right in front of you the lovely Brokaw Theater, opened in 1931 and restored to its classic Art Deco appearance. Now on a related Hollywood note, do you remember hearing the stories of how in the golden age of movies actors would do summer stock in local theaters? Well, country music stars actually did the same thing at places like Buck, Horn, excuse me, Buck Lake Ranch here in Angola. Beginning in 1947, country performers like Hank Williams, Dolly Parton, Johnny Cash, Loretta Lynn, and Minnie Pearl performed here in the summer. And now these camps kind of fell out of favor with prominent artists when country music changed in the 90s. Buck Lake Ranch still exists, and it's a campground and a music venue for smaller acts. Now, driving from Angola toward Elkhart, you'll go through Indiana's Amish country. Think of, you know, Lancaster County here in Pennsylvania. So remember to factor in some time and stop at some of the many locally run shops along the way. When you get to Elkhart, visit the Lerner Theater because it's a beautifully restored theater opened in 1923. Now, Captain Ed's in Michigan City appears to be a standard furniture store, but when you see the fun pirate ship outside, you know you're in for a surprise. Enter and visit what they claim is the largest pirate themed candy store in the world. Not only that, there is a free pinball arcade, a classic 1970s record shop, and movies props collected by the owner are also prominently displayed. Some furniture pieces never sold and they have also be stayed here becoming classics. So not only is this a fun stop for travelers like us, but Captain Ed's is a huge contributor to local charities. Now, Brace yourself, because this place right here, it's a place that Maud Betty is all agog about visiting. So this doesn't look like you're in, oh, a, you know, this looks like you're in Miami, doesn't it? This is the Indiana Dunes National Park in Chesterton. And specifically, this is one of the homes of tomorrow. So the homes of tomorrow are five full-size model homes, each of a different style. They were created for the 1933 Century of Progress World Fair in Chicago. Now the houses were moved here by truck and barge after the fair was over. Now you can look at them um, from the outside when you go through the park at any old time, but once a year, once a year, they open them up for visitors to go to the inside. Tickets go fast and I'm signing up, I'm telling you. So if you are interested in 
driving on some other historic highways when you're on your Route 20 trip, there you have two opportunities at this point in our journey across the US. So if you like the Lincoln Highway, the Lincoln Highway in New Carlisle, Indiana, um, you can pop up there. And then also, we're going to be heading into Illinois. And Historic Route 20 and Historic Route 66, BFFs, they meet there in countryside. Now, there's not a lot of fanfare at the intersection, but you can um, st stay at the Route 66, excuse me, you can stand at the Welcome to Countryside sign and snap a photo of the iconic, iconic Route 66 sign nearby. There we go. Just ignore the trash behind it. Now, Belvedere, Illinois is the city of murals. Of course it is. It says that they're right on the sign. Um, this tradition began in 1997 with murals recreating their past and more. The city also has a Carnegie Library, a Frank Lloyd Wright Chapel, and a WPA era community building. Now, Rockford, Rockford, Illinois, a place I didn't realize I needed to go to until I started researching it, and now I'm making a beeline for that because there's so many things here. So, Rockford, Rockford Peaches, anybody? Take a detour to the Bayer Stadium to visit the original location of the Rockford Peaches. The All-American Girls professional baseball team made famous in the 1992 film A League of Their Own. Now, you could call Rockford, Rockford, or if you look at these little monkeys right below there, you can call it Sockford because the iconic sock monkey was a doll made out of Rockford red heel socks. These were made here in Rockford and they're so proud to call themselves home of the sock monkey that the Midway Village Museum has an annual sock monkey festival where you can make, buy, and swap sock monkeys. I love this. Now, my Betty's musician husband notes that his favorite band, Cheap Trick, puts the rock in Rockford as they hail from here. So Rockford's Mail has officially, unofficially renamed the city Trickford in honor of the band's induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, our Route 20 guy has let me know he has a Trickford t-shirt, so now I get to get one for, my, uh, for Retro Road Husband. And the great thing is, is when you go to Rockford, you can walk a fan trail that passes by many of the important places uh, it, that made this band what they are today. So, hungry yet? I'm always hungry on the road. The Union Dairy in Freeport has been serving customers with dairy products since 1914. Now, ice cream has been sold here since 1934, and the most popular flavor is orange pudding. Yeah, orange pudding. Uh, nothing beats a hot fudge sundae or milkshake on a hot summer day. Um, and if you don't like hot, uh, if you don't like uh, orange pudding flavor, or maybe you're more of a savory tooth, uh, you can get servers. You can they serve burgers, dogs, and sandwiches too. But I mean, you got to get an ice cream. It's a dairy for crying out loud. Now, whatever you choose to eat, be sure to check out the Lincoln Douglas statue next door, where Abraham Lincoln gave one of his famous speeches. Now, Galena. Galena, Galena. Galena was named for the Latin word for lead, which used to be the primary industry in this area. Now, today the town is a popular destination for its like old Mississippi River feel. So stroll down Main Street with its many shops, including a place called Root Beer Revelry, serving root beers from around the country. Now, this may look familiar to you because it is the setting where Ray met Doc Graham in the film Field of Dreams, which I'm going to talk about in a few minutes. Now, for those of you with a historic bent, also note that Ulysses X. Grant was given a home in Galena after his service in the Civil War, and he was here when he learned that he won the presidency. Oh my gosh, we're already in Iowa. Iowa, State 7. This is crazy. We're driving fast. I think I'm breaking the speed limit. So Iowa is the only state where Highway 20 has moved to a four-lane highway. However, the original 1926 alignments are now in Iowa State Historic Auto Trail which is, of course, what we're going to follow. And so you follow these brown and white signs into smaller downtowns. Now, crossing the Mississippi is a rite of passage on any cross-country road trip, and we're going to be heading over the Old Miss on the Julian Dubuque Bridge, built in 1943. Dubuque is a town worth exploring, but if your time is limited, you have to make sure to take the Fenland Place Elevator. This is an old-fashioned weighted elevator car that goes up the side of the bluff on a track, and from the top you can see the town and a beautiful view of the Mississippi River. Now, I love the fact that this was created 
because wealthy businessmen who lived at the top of the hill, it doesn't say too lazy, but they just didn't want to walk up the hill, the steep roads and stairs to their home at lunchtime. Lazy bones. Now there's something for everyone in Dyersville. That should be like their bumper sticker. Because if you're a film and sports buff, you will love the fact that this is home to the Field of Dreams, based on that classic 1989 movie that gets folks all choked up thinking about having a catch with their dad. Heck, it gets me choked up and I don't even play baseball. Now, if you're a religion or architecture appreciator, you want to visit the beautiful Basilica of St. Francis Xavier. And if you like musicals and beer, right here, you'll want to head to Textile Brewery. Now, while it is a new location, or it's a new place, it is housed in an old pajama factory. So check this out, pajama factory, ring a bell? It was the inspiration for the Broadway musical and 1950s Doris Day film, Pajama Game. The interior remains many of the used, retains many of the items used when it was a factory. Feeling hungry? My Betty's always asking that on the road. Let's stop and get an iconic loose meat sandwich this is an Iowa staple, and you got to get one it made right. And as you can see, they smell it M-A-I-D-R-I-T-E, but I believe the sandwiches are made right. So not to be confused with the Sloppy Joe, not to be confused. These were made with ground beef and spices, but no sauce, no sauce. An original Iowa chain, Made Right's Cedar Falls location opened in 1947. Now here's a place of it. This is, this is a story that takes me back to my grade school days because at Fort Dodge, you can visit the Fort Dodge Museum, the Fort Museum, and see a replica of the famed Cardiff Giant, as you can see right here. Now this was considered the biggest hoax of the 19th century and promoted by P.T. Barnum. So gypsum from Fort Dodge was used to create and carve a supersized human figure that was shipped to Cardiff, New York, buried and then discovered to prove that giants once roamed the earth. Now, the crazy thing about this is the reason they chose Fort Dodge gypsum to carve it with is because the gypsum here has blue streaks in it and they thought it resembled human veins. Ooh, kinda creepy. Now, Iowa in general is a rural state, so when time permits, drive down some of the main streets and see if something catches your eye. You can have a picnic at the Rainbow Arch Bridge in Rockwell. You can jog down Correctionsville's Main Street. You can drive on an original 1918 pavement in Moville and be amazed that this narrow road was once a transcontinental highway. And if you're a retro road mapper who loves those kitschy little places, oh my gosh, I'm touching something. I screwed it up. There we go. Um, right here in Sac City. Oh my God, stop it. <laughs> in Sac City, you can see the world's largest popcorn ball. Yes, eight feet wide, 24 feet around. This ball of popcorn is believed to weigh over 9,000 pounds. All right, moving right along. We are in Nebraska, Nebraska. So I learned a new term on this uh, retro road trip and I realized that I have a touch of the cholerophobia. And you may too, if you're afraid of clowns, but on the off chance that you're not afraid of clowns, you can go right ahead and visit Plainville, Nebraska's Clown Doll Museum. That's clown with a K, doll there, just one word, Plainview Clown Doll Museum. Now, I don't know who came up with this, but the, clowns, <laughs> the town's clown theme originally began as a tourism boost idea in the 1950s. And people began <laughs> donating all sorts of clowns to the local chamber. To which I say, of course, because they didn't want to have them around them in their own house and they found a perfect place to get rid of them. So they donated them to Plainville. Then Plainville got too many and then they opened a museum and they also have a Clownville Festival. So if that's your thing, have at it. If it's not, you can also visit Plainville because it is the setting used in the Academy Award winning film, Nebraska. Now, I'm changing the slide immediately because I'm not a big clown fan, but this one, luckily, is one of my favorite stops right here. So Bassett, Bassett, Nebraska, has two things that I love here. It's got the Bassett Lodge and Range Cafe, one of the best examples of a vintage hotel, dining room, and lunch counter that has not been altered since the 1940s. 
also in Bassett, there's a preserved Phillips 66 gas station. So you can totally pose your car there and pretend you're getting gas the old fashioned way. Moving into O'Neill, O'Neill, it has a giant shamrock in the middle of Route 20 because it's Nebraska's Irish capital. Now in Ainsworth, we're gonna stop at Ranchland, a three generation owned family store. It's a place to get Western wear because they are an old fashioned clothier that's been around for decades. Also, again, feeling hungry? I think that should be my motto, feeling hungry? You can stop at Big John's restaurant and not only get a giant burger, not as big as the one that's on the sign, you get a giant burger and get your photo for Instagram posing under Big John, the sign. So this is kind of neat. In Gordon, Iowa, somebody painted a wall mural map of the region on the inside of Stockman's drugstore in the 1950s, and it's still there. And in Gordon is the Tri-State Old Time Cowboy Museum. Now, while I normally don't say go to museums, what I do love is the fact that this offers a glimpse of cowboy life in the area. Now, this part of local culture is important because it is things that, that we don't have at home. Like I'm an Easterner, I don't know anything about rope and broncos or whatever. So this is a place, a perfect place to learn about rodeos, cowboys, and life on the range. Home on the range, maybe. I don't know if you're gonna see deer and antelope playing, but you might. Um, another cool place to go to get that kind of cowboy, like you're getting out into the, the Midwest and the West field, is the Fort Robertson State Park in Crawford. Now, it started as an outpost in the early days of the Wild West and Indian Wars, and after World War I, it was primarily a place for horse breeding and training for the war efforts. But today, check this out, the park comprises of more than 22,000 acres of scenery, including lodging and camping, uh, camping acres. 22,000 acres! My, that's a lot of acres! <laughs> the park even has its own buffalo and longhorn herds. Now we are in Wyoming, state nine, so we're trucking across the country here, and you know you're in the Wild West, you know you're in the Wild West when the town and the state erect a plaque in honor of the town madam and former brothel. Yep, there's a plaque there. Now the building is not there anymore, uh, but you can pull over for a stretch and read about the Yellow Hotel in Lusk, Wyoming, about its history and the tales of its keen-minded business owner and philanthropist, Del Burke. Now in Douglas and Casper, the old highway goes through these downtowns as Business 20. So in Douglas, the best thing to do is to pose with the jackalope at the Wyoming State Fairgrounds. Now the jackalope was invented by a local, local taxidermist in 1930s and is a mythological creature combining a jackrabbit with antelope or deer antlers. Downtown Casper has kept its vintage feel with many neon signs and storefronts, and it hasn't really changed much since the 1950s and 60s. Lou Taubert seen here, this neon sign would definitely draw me in, and it's a perfect place to pick up some western duds. Now after you've learned how to become a cowboy in one of those places we just were, next thing you know, you're buying the boots and the hat, and you'll be saying howdy partner when you come back, just saying. They know what they're doing here too, they're going to outfit you okay because they've been around for 100 years. Now, with a name like Thermopolis, you may be thinking of superheroes, but this town is named for the Thermal Hot Springs, Thermo Hot Springs, that create this unique landscape. Now, if you bring your bathing suit, you can soak in the thermal waters at the Wyoming State Bathhouse for free. A treaty with the Native Americans declared that the state could use the property only if it remained free. Just keep in mind, and I'm so glad that I've learned this, that you might smell like sulfur for the next few days because of the high concentration in the water. Now, if you want to go way back in time, the Wyoming Dinosaur Center is in town. And for more travel ideas on Route 20, there's a large Route 20 display at Visit Thermopolis. Now, Cody, downtown Cody is the last city you reach before Yellowstone National Park. It's many shops catering to tourists, and the downtown still resembles a postcard from the 1960s. The Irma Hotel was opened in 1902 and is called the Grand Lady of Cody. Financed by Buffalo Bill Cody, he visited often after touring the world with his famous shows. The Cherrywood Back Bar there was a gift to him from Queen Victoria. 
Now, I'm sure you've heard of Yellowstone National Park, and you can learn all about that other places. You know, of course, that it thrives. It's on its natural beauty with the geysers and the waterfall and the wildlife. This look and feel is quintessential National Park, Park Lodge style, a design from the 1920s or 50s. Anyway, you can learn more about that someplace else, but we've got Route 20 to go on, so we're going to go into Montana. Now, I love this because it is just a little smidge of Route 20 in Montana, but they get in there so we can say we were in 12 states. So historic Route 20 travels only 12 miles through the state of Montana. There's only one town along that section called West Yellowstone, and as the name implies, it was it's pretty much for tourists taking the train to the western edge of Yellowstone National Park. So today it is mostly a tourist town. Eagle Store has been serving visitors there since the first train arrived in 1903, and the current building dates to about 1927. There's a soda fountain counter there from 1930, and a perfect place to try a chocolate soda. There's also a museum of the Yellowstone housed in the old Union Pacific Rail Station there offering an insightful view of tra travel and tourism to Yellowstone in this region of Montana. I must be talking wicked fast because I cannot believe we're already at State 11. State 11 is Idaho. Okay, I'm going to start talking smaller because I don't want our travels to end. All right. So actually the first place, why don't we just hang out here for a while? We're going to hang out at the Frost Stop because look at that. Look at that giant root beer mug. What retro road mapper would not want to pull over when they saw that giant frosty mug of root beer? So this frost stop is in Ashton. It has been here since 1965, and you can pull in under the awning and order from the menu in front of your car. The frost stop burger is the best seller, and of course you want your own frosty mug of root beer, just not as big as the one out front. Speaking of frosty mugs of root beer, I've been talking a lot, so I'm just going to take a little sip. Not root beer. Oh, I wish it was root beer. Idaho Falls was named for the Cascading Falls along the Snake River. But to enhance this, a hydroelectric dam was built to create even larger falls. Now, I love this because the city offers a historic walking tour. I'm all about the historic walking tours. And they all offer one showing its buildings built between 1880 and 1940. Now, I am curious, maybe my question at the end of this will be for uh, uh, Brian Farr, the Route 20 guy, to see if he's got a family, family hookup here at the Farr Candy Company. Uh, the Farr Candy Company is in Idaho Falls. They have making, been making delicious cordials and bars since 1911. Now, Huckleberry, like Huckleberry Hound, Huckleberry Friend, Huckleberry is a popular flavor in Idaho and Montana. But if fruit and chocolate is not your thing, me, not so much, they have a thing called the Idaho Spud. Now, this is wrapped to resemble an Idaho potato, and it is a marshmallow center dipped in chocolate and rolled in coconut. That's more my jam. Arco. Arco, Idaho. Look at this. It was the first city in the world lit by atomic power, and they light up this message in glorious neon on their Art Deco town hall. Now, if you're interested, if this is your kind of thing, you can actually visit the nearby experimental breeder reactor site that dates to 1951 and was the world's worst, the world's first nuclear power plant. If you're one of those people, that could be your thing. Like, I'm traveling the world seeing nuclear power plants. Everybody's got a thing. Now, Boise. Okay, so Boise is the state capital, and I've said all along that there's too much to do in the cities, and we can't talk about what's in the cities, but I'm stopping in Boise because there were two things that totally caught my eye. So one is the fact that Boise is the home to the largest Basque community in the United States, and in fact, the largest community outside of Spain. Isn't that crazy? I had no idea. Immigrants came here in the 1800s to use their sheep herding skills in the New World. And located in downtown Boise, it's not, it, there's a place called the Basque Block. Now, it's an area of the downtown, the historic downtown, filled with restaurants, shops, and events that celebrate the traditions of this community. I think that's great. I also think that it's great that right around the corner from this, is the Egyptian Theater. Opened in 1927, it is one of those few Egyptian-themed theaters remaining in the country. And much like two things before, when I was kind of making fun of somebody who would go around and go check out like nuclear reactors on vacation, I love Egyptian theaters, so I would probably go around the world and look at Egyptian theaters, so to each their own. So both of those are in Boise, all right? 
So the city of Caldwell, now Caldwell's kind of interesting because it, they have resurrected a ghost town to incorporate and restore existing buildings, structures, and signs in their downtown to make it kind of a modern retro town in a downtown to go check out. They've got all sorts of restaurants and events to entice you to come here. And it's just interesting to see how they use the new and the old together here to get people to come out and have kind of a unique experience. Now, just outside of Caldwell is the 1922 Boise River Bridge. Now, this is located at a site that was used by the Oregon Trail pioneers because of its narrow, shallow waters. Uh, and at one point, this bridge carried both US-20 and US-30 across. How did we get to Oregon already? Did I drive? Did I pass the speed limit? Was I talking too fast? Crap! I'm like, oh, I, I, I kind of feel like that little thing, like, oh my gosh, I'm at the end of a road trip, but we just got on the road. <sighs> All right, well, state, state 12, bear with me. All right, so Vail, Vail, Oregon. First settled in the 1850s, and the oldest house in town is the 1872 Reinhardt Stone House. You can see it right here. I would try to poke at it with my pointer, but I'd be afraid I would screw something up. The other cool thing about Vail is that they are also a city of murals. So this is neat. They have over 25 murals depicting the history of Vail along the Oregon Trail. And Vail's outdoor art gallery launched in, launched in 1992 as a way to boost tourism and revitalize the town's economy. Every year, the Mural Society paints a new mural. So you can get a handy map and you can collect them all. You can go check them all, say, yep, checked it off, got it. So I love that kind of stuff. Keeney Pass is just outside of town where you can explore the old Oregon Trail and even see, instead of mystery footprints in the snow, I think I'm channeling Pee Wee Herman here, you can see old Oregon, you can see wagon ruts in the stone, ghost riders in the sky, wagon ruts in the stone. Now, Oregon has the largest open spaces between towns on Route 20. But so much of your state, so much of your, your trip on this state, in this state, is going to be seeing stuff you ain't never seen before. It's going to look so different than when things started out 3,000 miles east. And so just appreciate the fact that you're seeing things that you would not see anywhere else and the beauty of the natural world, especially here on Earth Day. Now, you're probably going to need to get out and stretch a couple of times. So they have a couple of places called oasises. Maybe OASI, I'm not sure if that's the plural, but I'm going to make sure, pretend it is. Um, so if you need to get out and stretch, the Oasis Cafe in Juntura is halfway between Vail and Burns, about 60 miles each way, and you can also camp and park your RV here. Now, Ords, right here, is another oasis, and it originally started as a stagecoach stop in Buchanan over 135 years ago. Now, while it's a place for gas and snacks and stretching, it has also become known as a gallery and store for one-of-a-kind art made by local Native American tribes. Now, this next spot is definitely what puts the retro in retro roadmap. Because some of you may be like, yeah, and? But here's the deal. So not too long ago, blockbuster video stores were everywhere. But now there is only one left in the entire world. One. Now, there was even a documentary made about this place. This is the last blockbuster in the world in Bend, Oregon. Now, this is a nostalgia trip for the generation who fondly remembers visiting the video rental star store as part of their childhood that has now disappeared. You know, you can still rent movies here. This is the crazy thing. You can still rent movies here. Now, they're not on VHS, they're on DVD, but you can also buy t-shirts, hoodies, hats, magnets, fanny packs and other souvenirs to commemorate the fact that you went to the last blockbuster on the planet. So that's the retro and retro world map. Now, here we go. Oh, we're not, we're almost there. Okay, good. Cause we have one last stop. This is our last stop before we hit the end of the road. This is Blodgett's country store in Blodgett, Oregon. Now it boasts the oldest walk-in beer cooler in Oregon. Yeah. Not many places can say that, uh, but it is also the post office. It is also the pizza shop. It is also the gas station. It is the convenience store. Talk about one-stop shopping. So get all that stuff because our next stop is going to be Newport. Oh, Newport, Oregon. You guys, we're at the end of the road. I feel like we just got in the car together. This is crazy. So this is the funny thing. Historic Route 20 ends in Newport literally just blocks from the Pacific Ocean, right? So there's an opportunity for you to snap a photo 
at a sign. You'll see it in the next slide. So do that, but then head out and to the historic waterfront for a celebratory meal and a view of the water. Now you can see the beautiful, you can see the water right there in that beautiful bridge. The Yakima Bay Bridge is a classic Art Deco, Art Modern, Gothic base supports built in 1936. Gorgeous bridges. They just don't make them like that anymore. And then Moe's Seafood. So Moe's Seafood opened in 1946 and is known for its clam chowder, much like New England is. So much like New England, we started in New England with clam chowder. We end in, uh, we end in Oregon with clam chowder. So raise your cup of chowder <laughs> and toast yourself for having completed a 3,300 mile road trip from coast to coast traveling through 12 states. And then toast with your cup of chowder, historic route 12, 20, excuse me, for making it so much fun. So thank you for coming along with me and thank you to our sponsors and please support them. Now I'm gonna just, Carm's Restaurant, not Cam's, Carm's Restaurant and Coffee Shop, Chester Mass, American Hotel in Chester Springs, Connie's Diner in Waterloo. There's a new girl in town and she's looking good. I did it. Max Drive in Waterloo, Palacos Chocolates, Erie PA, Danny Lyon in Wakeman, East of Chicago Pizza in Wakeman, Union Dairy in Freeport, and Savvy Salvage in Dyersville. There we go, my friends. So, does anybody have any questions for the Route 20 guy? I think he's, he, as I said, he's going to have the A's to your Q's. <laughs> yeah, so we'll stick around here for um, a few minutes and yeah. to see if anybody has any comments. Um, questions about uh, taking the road trip or you if you're watching later on um, here we can definitely um, answer those questions later on and um, again we want to thank my Betty so much for coming out taking us on this road trip I was thrilled because I've been to all these places <laughs> and um, most of these were my pictures too so I'm just looking at them, but I've seen them through her eyes almost and it was almost like I was revisiting them for the first time through somebody else's lens. And that's really amazing um, to see and do. So um, yeah, it's it just goes so fast. And it's that same feeling you just said, when you get to the end of the road, when you get to Oregon, you start seeing the signs, Newport is 100 miles away. Newport is 50 miles away. And you're like, slow down, slow yeah. down. I, wanna, I don't want to end. And then literally you have to end because if you keep going west, you <laughs> yeah. go over a 50... <laughs> There's a 50 foot cliff down to the Pacific Ocean, yeah. and, you know, you don't you know, want to do you, that. You don't want to end that way. So, um, yeah, so it's just, um, it's a great trip all around. Um, so thanks everybody for watching. Uh, this will be again, be posted on uh, the, our Facebook pages, both Retro Roadmap and on um, Historic Route 20, as well as our respected YouTube pages. So people can watch this anytime. Share this with your friends, or if you're inspired to take a road trip, um, we'll definitely have um, more info. There is going to be a um, sheet you can download from our websites. Um, um, just to point out, I'm actually headed out on this road in two days myself. So it's um, on, um, I'm going with a scooter guy who's driving his scooter across the country. So I will be um, following him actually in the car. So I'm not gonna be on a scooter, but um, look for us out on the road um, safely, of course. Uh, we're all, you know, ready to go. But um, yeah, so if you're visiting us on our Historic Route 20 page, go check out Retro Roadmaps page, um, Facebook and her website. It's great. Um, lots of good books, retro books, uh, vintage places to see. I, I've i enjoyed so much and just to see all these old places. And then again, if you're on the Retro Roadmap page, think about taking a historic road trip on Route 20. Um, yeah, it's a long highway, but you can do it in sections. You don't have to do it all at once. And um, again, if you um, think about it, we're probably going to be doing the raffle next week. So people may get a chance to watch this over the next few days. They can donate whenever. And um, yeah, we'll be doing the raffle next week. So um, and, you know, if you're not if you're in Oregon and you get something, we can definitely do some sort of exchange too. So you don't have to fly all the way up to um, <laughs> Massachusetts to enjoy a meal, unless you really want to, that'd be great yeah. to support our local businesses. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. Um, yes. Um, I'm just seeing some of the comments here. Um, oh yes. Uh, definitely use more of the pics. Uh, oh, we, we, we thought of so many pictures. I mean, this could have really been a, um, 
two hour slideshow trip, you know, of, of the highway. And um, we tried to pick some of the best pictures um, that we could. And we may have left out a few places. And I even noticed, I'm like, oops, I forgot to put that one in. But, you know, we hope you got the idea of what some of these places look like. And as I was mentioning to my Betty when we first started, um, to, uh, I forgot what I was thinking. <laughs> um, oh, um, I'll come back to that. I, I, I was thinking of it and it just totally slipped my mind. Um, Anyway, uh, let me think here. Let's look here, here at some of the comments. Um, yep, uh, Speed Trap, uh, thank you uh, for that in Woodville, um, Ohio. Yeah, it was one of those, we had to, we, we wanted to limit it to five places. Sometimes it was more, uh, sometimes it was less. And um, yeah, there's Speed Trap uh, in Woodville, which is interesting because they were known for their speed traps. The cops would just sit there and literally the speed limit goes from 50, uh, 60 down to 25 in like a couple hundred yards. And you really, if you do not get down to that 25, by that 25 sign, the cops are sitting right there and they will pull you over. That's so there's a diner there called the Speed Trap. Um, <laughs> it's fairly modern-esque though. That's, we we're trying to go with older places and I know we put in a few newer ones. Um, but yeah, the Speed Trap is a good one out there. Um, and um, there was one I also forgot, and it was too late to put it in, but there's a place called Schmuckers, almost like Smuckers Jelly, but Schmuckers in Toledo. Yes, and I've that's heard a, of that. Yeah. What is it? So it's a little restaurant diner from yeah. probably the 30s and 40s. Uh -huh. And I totally forgot to put that in at the very last minute. So I definitely want to give a shout out there. And again, if you have any places that we missed, put them in the comments yeah. for us. Um, yeah. Tell us later on. And we'd be happy to include them later. And who knows, you know, there might be a um, retro roadmap too, <laughs> going across country. And exactly. I know Mod Betty really wants to take this trip and she might be posting some videos of herself out on the road. And, yeah. you know, and again, check out her YouTube page because her videos are, they're fun. You know, <laughs> you have to say when you're, when you love what you do and you're in, immersed in that, this culture of traveling or, uh, vintage places you can just tell that you're loving it and um yes oh and also check out her theme uh, not her alice theme you know but <laughs> she <laughs> she does have a very uh nice video theme song that i love and that's usually what i'm showing around so it's really awesome so oh, very cool um so yeah um i think this is pretty good we were a little bit late with our um <laughs> technology but uh that, that can awesome. be all edited out and in the end nobody will ever know right yeah it never happened never happened <laughs> exactly yeah. so well, this, yeah this has been so much fun brian thank you so much for sharing your knowledge of route 20 with me because i grew up you know not too far from it in massachusetts and now just to even get that whole notion of being able to go across the whole country you know, mm -hmm. I had never known about the Finger Lakes and now I'm rabid to go to the Finger Lakes to like Rockford to get myself mm -hmm. a chip trick shirt t-shirt. <laughs> you know, I want to go like how smelly will the sulfur be if I go into the hot springs, you know, maybe if yeah. we go there and, you know, it's just like all this neat stuff that I it's it kind of opens your opens your mind to the fact that and now with everybody getting safely vaccinated, we can safely go and travel and and, and hit the road. You know, right. So all right. Yeah. Stuff. But yeah. And in the end, still look to see if some of these places are operating on a regular basis. Um, some of them may be still limited, but, you know, last year was hard, but now most of these places are open and um, just check their websites or Facebook pages for times. Some of them are seasonal. So if you're going to get out this summer, definitely check it out. So mm -hmm. again, um, thanks so much for joining us tonight for Historic Route 20 Retro Roadmap. Uh, thanks to Mod Betty. And um, we will all see you soon on Historic Route 20 doing our little retro road tripping. So thanks, good. everybody. All right. Bye bye. bye.